Freight cars and locomotives, passenger cars, and private luxury homes on rails. They passed by here, and some were serviced and repaired and sent on their way south to Atlanta or the northern cities or west over the mountains. On the Southern Railway, one of the most important service and repair facilities was Spencer Shops in North Carolina. Today, it is one of the few facilities that have survived. The impact of the railroads upon the United States amounted to a social revolution. For the first time, farmers, manufacturers, merchants, and travelers had available a form of overland transportation that was fast, relatively inexpensive, little affected by weather conditions, and capable of moving large volumes of both goods and people. Great pressures developed on the part of industries and communities to be served by rail transportation. The railroad proved to be the means of opening up new territory. All across America, towns came into being as railroad division points, where locomotives were changed, serviced, and repaired, and where operating crews were changed. Spencer, North Carolina, was one of these towns. By the beginning of the 20th century, many Americans lived within 25 miles of a railroad. But the South was still poorly served. Southern Railway was formed to better serve the South, and Samuel Spencer was its first president. The Southern expanded quickly, and a new shop facility was needed for its 600-mile line between Atlanta and Washington, D.C. Spencer Shops opened with a machine shop, a repair shed, and a 15-stall roundhouse in operation. The first generation at Spencer Shops built a solid reputation as some of the best shop workers in the country. They fulfilled the demands placed upon them by the increased railroad activity during World War I, helped the railway weather natural disasters, and salvaged anything that could be saved from the tragedy of train wrecks. But it was the steam locomotive that was the real hero of America's railroads. Despite the complicated rods, wheels, and pistons of a locomotive, the way it worked was simple. Hot coals and fire heated water in a massive boiler. The result was a powerful force of steam, which caused the pistons and drive shafts to move the wheels. But a locomotive needed frequent inspection, and many of the locomotives on this southern line stopped in Spencer to be checked. By the 1920s, 2,500 people lived in Spencer, and as many as 2,000 worked at the shops. Three eight-hour shifts kept the workers moving in and out of a new roundhouse and larger shops for seven days a week, 365 days a year. Every locomotive that arrived at the Spencer yard was uncoupled from its train, moved to a pit, and inspected. 
the locomotive had just enough steam left in the boiler to move it to the wash track, where it was blasted with a mixture of water and cleaning solvents heated to 180 degrees. Next, it was moved to a 100-foot turntable, which directed the locomotive into one of 37 stalls in the roundhouse for routine maintenance and minor repairs. In the roundhouse, inspectors crawled into the still hot firebox to check for cracks in the metal, a very dangerous job. Sometimes wheels were dropped away from the locomotive to receive new tires or to be reworked. In the roundhouse, a number of jobs or repairs would be performed on the engine. Skilled workers called craftsmen picked up yellow slips from a slotted cabinet with specific work orders written on them. These craftsmen were machinists, blacksmiths, electricians, skilled laborers of many trades. If a locomotive was in need of heavy repair or a scheduled overhaul, it would be taken to the back shop. The back shop building was as big as two football fields, 600 feet long by 150 feet wide. An 80-ton crane moved the sometimes wheelless locomotives across the stations of the back shop. A complete overhaul of a single locomotive could be performed in 30 days. Also working in the yards, buildings, and shops at Spencer were carmen, boilermakers, painters, pipe fitters, helpers, apprentices, and laborers, and a small army of bookkeepers. Because of the discrimination of the times, African Americans did not hold craft jobs at Spencer shops, but worked as laborers. They polished engines at the roundhouse and worked as helpers to the craftsmen. Women served in clerical jobs. Engineer Steve Brody knew how important it was for the mail train to be on time. But what Brody did not know on September 27, 1903, was the route from Monroe, Virginia to Spencer Shops, for this was his first time on that run. Stillhouse Trestle in Danville, Virginia, was gently curved over a deep ravine, and Brody's late train approached the curve at a phenomenal speed. Brody tried to brake, but 80 tons of iron moving at 90 miles an hour could not negotiate the curve of Stillhouse Trestle. The first thing eyewitnesses recall was the deafening sound of the crash as the train skipped across the trestle and careened into the ravine. And then, an eerie silence. Suddenly, hundreds of yellow canaries floated out of the wreck, released from their crates on one of the freight cars. Nine people were killed, including Steve Brody, and Ralph Thompson, a boy who had hoped to get off at Lynchburg. The old 97 was in splinters at the bottom of the ravine, but the locomotive engine did make it back to Spencer Shops, hauled in for repairs. Although the day-to-day -day repair jobs of the workers at Spencer Shops were often routine, workers were frequently required to use their skills to solve unusual problems. In 1941, 
passenger engine 1380 was streamlined at Spencer Shops for Southern's Tennessean train, and the resulting bullet-nosed locomotive was considered one of the best streamlining jobs done anywhere. Pride was both a part of the shops and a part of the town. A family that settled in the town of Spencer in the early years was likely to stay there for many generations, sending their offspring into the Spencer shop workforce with pride. In the early 1940s, Spencer was a secure community with plenty of time for picnics and leisure activities. The neighboring Salisbury High School football team beat the Spencer Railroaders by a score of 99 to nothing, a defeat soon forgotten and forgiven by the townspeople, even when a Salisbury fan painted the score on the side of a Spencer bank. It seemed nothing could change the bright future of the town until, until the first diesel locomotive came to Spencer in 1941, towed in by a steam engine. The truth was hard to take. The diesel could travel much farther at less expense than the steam locomotive. The diesels not only required less maintenance, but also a different kind of maintenance. The boom days of the 30s and 40s were gone. But the men who worked on the railroads wanted to keep on working and kept up their hopes that Southern would redesign Spencer shops to effectively service diesels. Eventually, the old steam locomotives were lined up and scrapped. And in 1960, Heavy repair and overhaul at Spencer ended. Spencer Shops was slowly and painfully phased out. Later, Southern donated the shops at Spencer to the state of North Carolina. And now Spencer Shops has been carefully restored as a transportation museum, housing one of the finest collections of vintage railroad equipment, displayed in the same areas where workers once labored to keep the Southern Railway running smoothly. There is no way to count all the cars and steam engines that pass through Spencer shops for almost a century. As one worker said, there's a romance that goes along with a steam engine that you'll never get over once you've worked with them. You get the feeling they're a living thing. And Spencer Shops is still alive with the steam locomotives and the diesel engines and the private cars like those that passed through decades ago. And you can see them, there, outside the windows. Well, they gave him his orders in Monroe, Virginia, saying, Steve, you wait high time. This is not 38, but it's old 97. You must put her in to Spencer on time. Well, he turned around and said to his fireman, shovel in a little more. Coal.